Forum, so I'm going to get the meeting started. So welcome everyone to the joint meeting for the Rules and Open Government Committee and Committee of the Whole. And Tony, can we have a roll call, please? Paredes? Cohen? Here. Davis? Here. Perales? Jones? Present. Okay, we're going to start out with the agenda for April 26. And we are going to start out on pages four and five. And six and seven. eight and nine, 10 and 11, twelve and 13, And fourteen and fifteen. Well, stopped at fourteen. So we're going to go to the public. Tony, do we have any members yes. of the public? Um, James Michael. His microphone disappeared. I can't unmute him. Yeah, we, it looks like we've given him permission to talk, but there's something going on on his end. So James, you might need to um, sign out and sign back in and try updating your software maybe. It, it's not telling us you need to update your software, but we don't know what's going on. Okay, and if, that was the only hand up for this item. Okay, and if he can get it worked out, we'll allow him to yeah. speak later on this agenda. Okay, um, bringing it back to the committee. I'll move approval of the agenda. Thank you. I'll second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Tony? Arenas? Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Perales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay, we're now gonna review the agenda for May 3rd. And we're gonna start out on pages four and five. And six and seven. Eight 
and eight and nine. And ten and eleven. And twelve and thirteen. And fourteen. Okay. So we're going to go to the public for public comments. Blair Carson. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. Okay, so Jim is actually here with me. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, so when you guys were calling him earlier, I just, my salon is loud, so I decided to come over to Max. So we're together. So, um, Whatever you wanted to ask, do you go by James? I go by. Uh, what do they call you? Yeah. yeah, if you needed to ask him oh, anything, he can. Um, no, it's him. his. James's hand was up um, for the previous item. Does he want to speak about that item? Oh, we didn't no, have no, questions I, for him. Actually, I, would, I raised my hand just to make sure you know I was here. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. And I raised my hand just to tell you that he was here with okay. me. So I. <laughs> All right. I haven't done as I'm I haven't done a Zoom in this format before, so I was like, "We know I'm here. Can they tell?" So I'm here. Okay, so um, okay. we're we're very clear that he's here and you're here. So thank and you. I have no other hands up. All right, and so I'm going to bring bring it back to the committee, who's also here, looking for a motion. Move approval. Second. All right, it's moved and seconded, Tony. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Morales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay, on to the consent calendar. We'll go to public comments first. Caller 4963. Yes, hi, Martha O'Connell speaking to my letter in the public record. It's over two years since the council voted unanimously to apply the mobile home park designation to all the parks in San Jose. We're still waiting on that. All three of the mayoral candidates have pledged that they are in favor of this and they want to get it done. So I'm asking you to move forward. This letter was written before uh, I found out about Sergio Jimenez's memo. I, I I asked what it was. I haven't had a response yet from their office, but hopefully we can get this done. I would also point out that the Housing Commission unanimously uh, voted on November 18th of 2021 that this, that this move forward. So please make it happen. Just a quick comment on Councilperson Carrasco's memo. I thank her for drawing my attention to the fact that commissioners can be removed without cause and I really have a problem with that because I think it might get into- Martha, I'm sorry. Um, you're, you're speaking to an item that's further up, down on the agenda. Oh, I apologize. I, okay. Hopefully somebody will tell me when it comes up. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Blair Beekman. Hi, thank you. Uh, Blair Beekman here. The comment on the uh, item about the study session extending municipal voting eligibility to all city residents. Um, I hope there can be some sort of, um, I think I, I mentioned it before when this item came up, a way that we can be also be able to talk about uh, the concepts of, of English only language issues that is really prevalent prevalent in how we uh, conduct business of government in San Jose. These were uh, English only laws were really reinforced in the mid 1980s. And I think they really need to be questioned. I think it needs to be a part of the process because I think uh, English only laws at this point is inhibiting a more free flowing, interesting way to I don't know, just the way we can work as a society, I feel. 
I feel it's boxing out actually a lot of people from, from participating in the process. And it's sad that that happens. And I, I wish there was ways we could, we could do this. I, I don't know the depth of English only laws, but I know they're being questioned. And I think we can all agree that $300 an hour for Zoom language interpretation is, is uh, astronomical. And we could do better than that. It, it, those laws are specifically there to inhibit free flowing language participation. And why are we doing that? I think that really has to be a part of this, uh, uh, the future, future of voting eligibility for the future of all residents. And that has to be, I hope, really a part of this conversation coming up at this study session. Thank you. Veronica Amador. Great, thank you. I'm also here to speak about um, the upcoming voting for all a study session that is going to be happening. Um, I want to make sure that it is extended to a Friday afternoon um, after 5 p.m. Working families like myself, it makes it very hard to be on calls in the morning time, you know, or even right now, I have to step outside my role, take my 15 minutes to make this call and be on it. Um, and so I just want to make sure that it is available besides also having the language accessibility, which should be something that um, the charter review um, put forward and was very much in advocacy of that. Um, I want to make sure that we also provide times uh, where it's accessible and available for families and everyone that can join. Um, again, making it very hard uh, for families, and especially, you know, especially having people talk about marginalized communities. I think this is a way of making sure that accessibility to those marginalized communities gets open, uh, right? Many of you in council members talk about um, marginalized communities and how the communities have been affected, but yet when it's time to give them the priority and provide them with accessible times, accessible dates um, and language, um, it's not there. So I wanna encourage everyone, uh, all council members to please uh, put the study session to a time or make another study session to a time that it's accessible. That is on a Friday afternoon where many of us are at have that accessibility to join and also the language um, having that in a language that can be accessible to them whether it's Spanish Vietnamese Tagalog whatever that is please I highly want to advocate for that thank you Claire Carson hi I just I I'm just curious because I don't think I was quite aware uh, of the extent of this meeting um, I I agree with the last few speakers on everything that they've said. Um, I am here for the post street closure part of it. And I'm very interested in all things San Jose and accessibility for everybody. And I agree that we need translators, especially on our block. My question is, like the last person said, I had to move clients to be here. So how, is this like a two, three hour Zoom? Just out of curiosity, like, I, I thought we were just talking about like the San Pedro and Post Street closure. So, um, what are, yeah, I'm just wondering like if that's, if we are talking about that today, because I do have more clients that I've, you know. Yes, that's, a, that's an item that's coming up um, uh, on the agenda. Right now we're on the, the consent calendar, but that is an agenda item that we will be discussing. Okay, and just out of curiosity, can you still hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. Okay, sorry, because I can't, I'm not used to this. Um, how long do we think that this is going to be? And I'm not trying to rush anybody, but like the last um, person that spoke, I, I am on a schedule. So just if I need to move clients, I need to know. It depends uh, on how many, I have 13 hands up to speak on consent calendar and that's two <laughs> minutes per person. So we, okay. I can't tell you how long it's going to take. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to grab my phone and make some uh, changes to my schedule. Thank you. Ms. Rain Mendoza. Yeah, hello, how are you? My name is Ms. Rain Mendoza. I'm calling with Amigos of Guadalupe. I'm a community navigator, and I'm here to advocate uh, that we need to uh, move the study session 
at least to 5 p.m. because as you can hear, people has to move the schedules around. Uh, our community uh, normally goes to work, okay, with hardworking people. And uh, the mothers are also um, uh, taking the kids to school. So I'm urging the, um, the committee to please, please um, rethink uh, the time of the study session. So that way you can give us a voice and give us a fair chance to um, to pass these uh, uh, voting rights because it's very important for everybody to have a voice. Uh, we've been in the shadows too long, okay? And this is an opportunity that all city councils have in the hands The Carrasco and Arenas has been given to you, okay? And a silver platter to make a change in San Jose. If you want San Jose to be a smart city by 2040, you need to start here now. The community needs to be in this session and you need to make it available for everybody, okay? Not just for some of us, but for everybody. Okay, thank you very much and I yield my time, thanks. Arturo Munoz. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Este, my name is Arturo Munoz. I'm also speaking in behalf of the staying the or shifting the time for um, the evening regarding the you know, the study session. It is currently at a time that's inaccessible to many. As Esther Mizrainder mentioned, it is currently a time where people are dropping off their kids at school, currently at work, and even for ourselves, it's the, you know, it is not an ideal time in terms of community engagement. And this being an issue that continues to have a direct impact in all of San Jose, we want to ensure that all the community members from San Jose are able to attend. And as they're suggesting the, to move the time to a 5 p.m. in the evening, it's most ideal not just for our community members, for all of San Jose to be able to attend and hear about this um, recommendation to expand the um, vote to all of San Jose, even an issue that would impact all of San Jose. So, as I mentioned, I urge this, the city council members to move the time to 5 p.m., whether it be a Friday or any day of the week, it is the most accessible time for our community members. And it'll be a, the best way for y'all to continue to symbolize the fact that someone said is an inclusive space and is a space for all estate community members to be engaged in a civic uh, manner. And so again, like I mentioned, um, you know, move forward, we move the time to 5 p.m. And estate, we look forward to being present there as well. And I yield the rest of my time. Araceli Gutierrez. Hello, um, my name is Araceli Gutierrez and I'm here with, on behalf of the Basos Committee from Sacred Heart. And I'm also here to encourage and ask the council to move the voting rights study sessions to an accessible time to the community, especially communities that would be most impacted by this change in the city. And I'm encouraging to move it to a Friday evening. This study set, upcoming study session and all meetings or sessions regarding the voting rights to a Friday after 5 p.m. Thank you. Gustavo. Yes, uh, my name is Gustavo Flores. I'm part of Somos Mayfair with uh, Sinos Activos. And I actually, uh, the, the reason why I'm calling now is to please urge to extend the, the vote study session to, to Friday at 5 p.m. Because the current person time that you already have, it's, it's impossible for the working people. So we, just, uh, we only want to please change the time. And also, I think we do need a uh, translator in Spanish. I think we do have the right to have this translation. And I uh, know many people speak Spanish and listen. Many, many, many people is not understanding everything. So I please also urge to please have an uh, interpreter. And also, please have the change the schedule for the study session. Thank you very much. David. Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name is David Vivanco and I also concur with Gustavo and a few others as well. Um, 
I myself am currently also taking my 15 to uh, be in here and I would like it to be changed to 5 p.m. where it's more accessible for everybody. Um, there's a chance if I don't, um, I can get in trouble due to my work for uh, being on the phone during this time. So I would like to uh, please su suggest that to switch it to a more accessible time, either 5 p.m. Uh, any other day. That would be uh, great and that would help a lot of people and that would li like to hear a lot more from the community uh, so you can get you guys' opinion. Uh, I'd like to give up my time. Thank you. Irina? Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yurina Guzmán y he vivido y trabajado durante 17 años en San José. Estoy aquí exigiendo que la sesión de estudio para expandir el voto se reprograme para un viernes a las 5 p.m. El tiempo propuesto actual para la sesión de estudio es inaceptable para las familias trabajadoras de San José que contribuyen la mayoría a esta ciudad. Abogamos por un proceso democrático inclusivo. También exigimos que todos los eventos relacionados con la expansión del voto se adopten a los orígenes étnicos um, de esta ciudad. También que proporcionen traducción a diferentes idiomas y programen en un horario ideal para que las familias puedan participar y las comunidades sean informadas. Esto sería los viernes a las 5 p.m., Incito al comité que avance en la reprogramación de la sesión de estudio para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 p.m. y que haya traducción a diferentes idiomas para que sea más inclusivo. Muchísimas gracias. Okay, I'd like to know, I don't have interpreters for this meeting. I have scheduled them already for the study session, so I cannot interpret for the person who just spoke, but we already have them booked for April 29th. The next speaker is Nancy. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I just wanted to start off by saying um, it's really weird that there is an interpreter when there's an item on the agenda that specifically impacts the immigrant community. Um, but And also, I want to echo everything. Um, sorry, I'm with PSL, Party for Socialism and Liberation. I want to echo everything everyone said so far. I think it's so important that the majority of your constituents are working class people. And being working class means that you're working generally nine to five or different schedules. And so we really, I'm sure you can understand that we're really tired of really using the word accessibility or inclusivity as kind of like calls, but not really acting on them. Um, if we truly want to be inclusive, we have to change the time to 5 p.m. Really that's the time that's gonna be most accessible to people. And I also think it's super, super important that we have the interpreters available not just in these study sessions, but really in all of these meetings. There's so much of a, there's such a large immigrant community, Vietnamese, um, Mexican, Latin American community in San Jose. And those members are also your constituents. They're not only Spanish speakers. And if really this is an opportunity to get, engage them in democracy, we tend to talk about democracy a lot. If this is an opportunity to engage in democracy, then we should be doing that in a way that's accessible to everybody's language. Um, really, it is the, uh, the immigrant community that really makes this society function and brings food to our table and, and does the work. And so I think that we need to acknowledge them and we need to be able to, again, make this accessible for them. Um, and I yield the rest of my time, thank you. Jeremy. Good afternoon. My name is Jeremy Barus, and I'm with Amigos de Guadalupe Center for Justice Empowerment, and we are part of the Nuestro Voz Derecho y Voto campaign. I urge the committee to move the start time of the study session on expanding voting rights to all San Jose residents for an upcoming Friday or weekday at 5 p.m. to allow working families to participate. We have hundreds of community members who would like to weigh in with public comment at the study session. However, they will not be able to attend due to work. Changing the start time of the study session to 5 p.m. will give more working families the opportunity to participate. By changing the start time of the council study session, the council and our city are, will be expanding democracy and would give working families the opportunity to participate in civic participation, which is really at the core of this policy. So again, in closing, I urge uh, the council to please 
uh, change the start time of the council study session to a weekday at 5 p.m. Thank you. Letty Alvarez. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, hi, my name is Leticia Alvarez. Uh, I work for Sacramento Community Service Supporting Passos Committee. And we are here in support of um, moving uh, the session, the study session in the afternoon. Many of our families cannot make it at 9, 9 a.m. And they are really, really wanted to be part of this discussion and wanted to continue learning um, about our city. Uh, please, I encourage you to change the time so our families can be part of this study session and can can give their opinions at the public comments. And then also just to let you know, we have a lot of people in this call that really wanted to uh, speak in favor of moving this study session time, uh, but they don't speak English. So just keep that in consideration for the future, uh, especially if we know that we have these kind of items um, in, in those moments that are to be discussed. So uh, folks will be speaking even if they don't speak Spanish, but um, th they respect to be heard. Thank you. Dilza Gonzalez. That should be fine. And then, um, of... can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening, uh, my name is Delsa Gonzalez. Um, I work and live in San Jose, but I'm also a community organizer with Nuestra Voz Derecho y Voto um, Committee. Um, I am here to request um, for the um, voting study session, stud, um, study session to be moved for May 6 at 5 p.m. This is um, to echo everything that um, um, my community has already said, but also to echo that there's a need. If we want to be transparent, engage and engage the people that are really gonna benefit or has really uh, a setting to this, then we need to move it. Our parents, our community, our hardworking men and community members that are essential to our working. They are the ones that are there early morning and they're the ones dropping off their, their kids early in the morning as well. We need to be, more um, transparent and we need to be accountable for people to show up. Please move the study session to, to May um, 6 at 5 p.m. and also move any other um, meetings that are up and that are about the um, voting rights to a later um, time like five or after so our community can participate, can have a say in, um, in this process as our truly engagement and transparency to every single community member out there. Thank you and have a really good um, day. Fernanda. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So my name is Fernanda Perdomo Siniegas. I have been a citizen of San Jose for the last 25 years. I work and I study in uh, the city of San Jose. And the reason I'm here today is because I want to ask that the city council move the study session to a working day that is after 5 p.m. when uh, people from the city uh, from all different identity, social identities can participate because if the city of San Jose wants to make this, uh, this process a lot more equitable, needs to actually take into consideration the people that work nine to five or um, has to go to school uh, at, the, at those hours. I also feel that it's important to make um, uh, a comment and I, I know it has been expressed before, that this, um, this kind of uh, open, open conversations with the community need to be inclusive. And I, I encourage the city to have translator, not only for Spanish speakers, but also for Vietnamese, Tagalog, Cantonese, and Mandarin. Because if you really wanna make sure that San Jose is a, re is a city that is inclusive and is looking and is seeking uh, for racial equity, um, that it, it wants to eliminate um, systemic racial inequalities, it has to start from making things accessible to the public. So I will say please to think about making sure that there are translators uh, in these meetings as also um, that this kind of a, a, a spaces are um, available for people to also work and study in the city. So um, thank you so much and I yield the rest of my time. Daniel.
Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel. I am. I uh, I've been living here in, in San Jose for about 20, 21 years, and I am a painter. And I like to, if it's possible, uh, please help help the community because we all wanna be involved on this and listen about the, uh, the study session you have. And we really wanna know what we can, we can do to help. And and if you do this, uh, will be great. And all the community will be glad to hear that. And I hope you can do that. And it's all for my for me for me. Uh, thank you, and you have a good evening. Luna. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gabriel Manrique, community organizer with Luna and a longtime resident of San Jose. I am calling to urge for the expandable study session to be moved for Friday, May 6 at 5 p.m. Uh, the current proposed time for the study session is not accessible to the working families of San Jose, which most of them are essential workers. Also, we demand for all events relating to expanding the board to be accommodating to all ethnic backgrounds by providing translation and schedule an ideal time for the community participation, such as Fridays at 5 p.m. Having study sessions or any other public meetings from the city at 9 a.m. is not inclusive nor a democratic process. I urge the committee to move forward with rescheduling the study session to Friday, May 6 at 5 p.m. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Jennifer. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Parra and I'm with Amigos de Guadalupe Center for Justice and Empowerment, as well as a member of the Vols de Derecho and Voto campaign. And I'm here to speak in favor of changing the time of the upcoming study session. Um, many of our community members would be directly impacted with um, this study session if it was to not be changed. A 9 a.m. is not accessible to most of our community members, given that most are working families and have children that they must take care of or take to school. So if um, what we are striving for is to expand our democracy, then this would be the perfect time to start with that. And that would be to um, change the study session to um, make sure that all community members are part of the process of um, that we are the, the change that we're trying to, to achieve here. So um, I urge the committee to really um, uh, change the um, upcoming study session from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. some um, afternoon time. Um, I believe it's not only fair, but is necessary to make it accessible to our community members. Thank you, and I give up the rest of my time. Italia. Good afternoon, my name is Italia. I live and work in San Jose, and I too agree that the current proposed time for the study session is inaccessible to the working families of San Jose, which make up the majority of the city. As we push for an all-inclusive democratic process, I urge the committee to move forward with rescheduling the study session to Friday, May 6th at 5 p.m. And I ask that all events relating to expanding the vote be accommodating to all ethnic backgrounds by providing translation and scheduled at an ideal time for community participation, such as Fridays at 5 p.m. I yield my time. Thank you. Yolanda. Hola, buenos días. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yolanda Chávez. Soy miembro activa de Latinos Unidos por una Nueva América. Estoy llamando el día de hoy para exigir que la sección de estudios para expandir el voto se programe para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 de la tarde. El tiempo propuesto actual para la sección de estudios no funciona para las familias trabajadoras de San José. Insto al comité a que avance con la programación de sesión de estudios para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 de la tarde para la extensión del voto. Gracias. Rosemary. Oh, I just promoted Rosemary an accident, but um, her hand was up. Okay, Rosemary, go ahead. Okay, we'll come back to Rosemary. Um, Fermina Reyes. 
Mi nombre es Fermina Reyes eh, y he vivido aquí en San José durante 27 años. Estoy aquí exigiendo a uh, que la sesión de estudio para expandir el voto se reprograme para un viernes a las 5 p.m. El tiempo propuesto actual para la sesión de estudio es necesario para las familias trabajadoras que no tienen el tiempo en las mañanas porque están trabajando. Um, la, esto lo constituye la mayoría, dice que son um, como eh, estamos abogando para un proceso democrático inclusivo. También exigimos que todos los eventos relacionados para la expansión del voto se adopten a todos los orígenes étnicos proporcionados y traducidos y uh, programados para un momento ideal para los participantes comunitarios, como los viernes a las 5 p.m. Esto al comité al avance para, reprogram para reprogramación de la sesión de estudio por el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 p.m. Eso nos beneficia muy bien a los trabajadores que van a tener el tiempo para poder estar presentes y, y poder a, a, alzar su voz. Muchas gracias. Caller 1541. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Glenna, and I am one of the thousands of mobile home residents here in San Jose, and I support the mobile home designation of all mobile home parks. There has been a two-year delay already. Ma'am, we're we, currently... We, we're, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, please, we need to move forward on this. So uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Eva. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name, actually, mi nombre es Eva Heredia y soy mamá de las escuelas que Rocky Ship y también soy parte del derecho de voz y voto de la coalición. Uh, estamos exigiendo para que nuestra voz sea escuchada. Somos cientos y cientos de familias y cientos de personas en nuestra comunidad que en este, en este tiempo tenemos que pedir permiso de trabajo y pedir permiso para poder estar en esta junta. Estoy pidiendo que por favor muevan la junta de el viernes en la mañana para en la tarde otro día que nosotros podamos estar por las tardes y no estar pidiendo tiempo libre. Eh, como no hay nadie que me interprete, lo voy a decir yo, pero creo que es importante que nuestra comunidad lo escuche. My name is Eva Heredia, and I'm representing hundreds and hundreds of families of uh, public schools, Cape and Rockership, and also I'm a part of the or vote right and vote coalition. And I'm here to ask you, please, Consider to move the this, this, this establish session in afternoon when we can attend and you can hear us and can, we can hear you guys and participate, be included in, in our, our community. Um, I'm very disappointed that we don't have translation. And I, I want to just call an attention to all city councils, all and representing the, the people that we representing each of you representing a new city council. Um, you know, I'm demanding to have translation every meeting that you guys have so we can participate. Thank you. Teresita. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, This is to ask the city to move. Hola, mi nombre es Teresita Rodríguez. Mi niña va a trans transferirlo en inglés, por favor. Sending vote, voting rights to all people in San Jose. We need to support to move the session from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the same day, April 29. Thank you for your support. Tony Romero. Um, good afternoon. 
Uh, my name is Tony Romero. I'm a community organizer with Luna, and I am here to urge you to reschedule that span uh, the boat study session uh, for a Friday uh, uh, at 5 p.m., um, preferably May 6. The current proposed time at 9 a.m. is not adequate for working families. This is a relevant policy for working families, and we are being excluded from this process. All events relating to expanding the boat policy should be scheduled uh, at an ideal time for community participation. Additionally, translation should be provided to all ethnic back backgrounds. I urge the community to move forward with the rescheduling, uh, with rescheduling the study session at an ideal time for community participation. Thank you. Gabriela Gutierrez. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Gabriela Gutiérrez, líder comunitaria con Luna. Estoy aquí exigiendo que la sesión de estudio para expandir el voto se reprograme para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 de la tarde. El tiempo, el tiempo propuesto actual para la sesión de estudio no es accesible para las familias trabajadoras de San José, que constituyen la mayoría en la ciudad. Como abogamos por un proceso de democrático, inclusivo. También exigimos que todos los eventos relacionados con la expansión del voto se adapten a todos los orígenes étnicos, proporcionando traducción y programados en un momento ideal para la participación comunitaria, como los viernes a las 5 p.m. Insto al comité a que avance con la reprogramación de la sesión de estudio para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 p.m. Gracias. Rosario Aguirre. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Rosario Aguirre. Soy líder comunitaria con Luna y estoy llamando para decirles que la sesión de estudio para expandir el voto se reprograme para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 de la tarde. El tiempo propuesto actual para la sesión de estudio no trabaja para las familias trabajadoras de San José. Insisto al comité a que avance con la programación de la sesión de estudio para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 de la tarde. Gracias. Latinos United. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. One second. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mara Pelagio, and I am the executive director with Luna Latinos United for a New America. And I am here to elevate the ask from the Coalition of Voz, Derecho y Voto to move the study session time from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. This policy would affect thousands of working people who would not be able to wait in if the session is kept at the time where people have to work. I want to express my true concern that there is no interpreter in this meeting. And this is the exact reason why we need to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to vote. So there is constant advocacy for those who have been denied a, vo a voice in this process for so long. We need interpreters in Spanish, Vietnamese, Tagalog, and other languages that are common in San Jose. Please do everything in your power to move the study session uh, at a time and place that, uh, and a time that works for working families, ideally after five, ideally on a Friday and in times when individuals are able to have a fair opportunity to participate in the process of public comment. Um, I want to translate really quickly for the community who's listening in Spanish. Compañeros, mi nombre es Mayra. Uh, trabajo con Luna también. Nada más estoy elevando la misma demanda de que queremos mover la reunión de sesión de estudio para el, la póliza de expandir el voto a tiempos donde la comunidad pueda atender También estoy pidiendo que tengan interpretación en español, vietnamita y otros idiomas que sabemos que son comunes en San José, porque por, muchas, por muchos años nuestras voces han sido calladas y es tiempo de que tengamos representantes que puedan abogar por estos recursos para nosotros también. Thank you so much. I yield the rest of my time. Liliana. Liliana Nunez. Okay, I'm going to move on to Gil Estrada.
Gile Estrada. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Rosa Cordova. Rosa. Okay, I'll move on to Esperanza. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Hello, my name is Esperanza. I'm a youth part of Jovenes Activos, and I want to participate in the voting rights study session. Please move it to May 6 at 5 p.m., as well as to any other meeting regarding to this. And also, we need translation for these kind of meetings. I do not have to repeat myself. As a youth, I find it really offensive towards me and my community. And to me, to this translation, please do your job properly next time. I said it once, so um, yeah. Alexandra? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Alexandra Rodriguez and I'm with Amigos de Guadalupe. I urge the committee to move the start time of the study session on expanding voting rights all to, San, to all San Jose residents for an upcoming Friday, May 6 at 5 p.m. to allow working families to participate. The current proposed time for the study session, as well as not having a translator during this meeting, continues the pattern of excluding community from the political process. We need for our community to be at the table in this process, and by moving the start time to 5 p.m., we'll achieve this. If passed, this policy would impact tens of thousands of San Jose residents, and we all should have a voice in this process. By starting at 9 a.m., several community members will not have the chance to add their voice to this process due to work. Changing the start time to the study session will ensure that we hear as many voices as possible on this important issue. Have the day you deserve. I revoke my time. Cecilio. Cecilio Viafana. Si, sí, me escuchan? I can hear you. Okay, uh, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Cecilio Villafaña y estoy aquí para pedir que se cambie la sesión de voz y voto para el próximo viernes a las 5 p.m. para que nuestra comunidad pueda participar. Gracias. Paula. Good afternoon, my name is Paola and I am with Amigos de Guadalupe and also part of the Voz de Derecho y Voto campaign. I urge the committee to move the start time of the study session on expanding voting rights to all San Jose residents for an upcoming Friday at 5 p.m. to allow working families to participate. The current proposed time for this study session continues a pattern of excluding community from the political process. Our community wants to be part of the table and by moving the start time at 5 p.m. that will help achieve this. Our community has you know, already suffered disproportionately because of the pandemic physically, mentally, and especially financially as they were, work, as they were forced to work on the front lines tirelessly during the pandemic. Um, just to recover from the financial hardships that they face. Because of this, our working class families simply cannot afford to take a day off or even a few hours of work um, in order to participate in meetings like this. So especially um, because of the fact that these study sessions also greatly affect them the most, not allowing an accessible time for them to weigh in is not inclusive and it also is unacceptable. Um, so once again, I urge the council to move the study session times to 5 p.m. Thank you guys. Liliana? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Liliana Nunez. Estoy aquí exigiendo que, la, que el estudio para expandir el voto se reprograme para el viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 de la tarde. El tiempo propuesto actual en la sesión de estudio no es accesible para las familias trabajadoras de San José que contribuyen para las familias trabajadoras. 
abogamos por un proceso democrático, por un, pro, ah, por un proceso democrático inclusivo. También exigimos que todos los eventos relacionados con la expansión, expansión del voto se adapten a todos, los origen, a todos los orígenes étnicos proporcionados tra, a, a que haga traducción y programados. Exigimos que también a, le den el voto a todas las, las familias que no... Gile Estrada, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that name wrong and I apologize. The last name is Estrada. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Rosa Cordova. Hola, este, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Rosa Cordova, líder comunitaria de Luna. Y estoy aquí para exigir que la, sex la sesión de estudio, el próximo paso en el impulso para ampliar el voto a todos, se reprograme para el próximo viernes 6 de mayo a las 5 p.m. para que las familias trabajadoras puedan participar el en el tiempo propuesto actual para la sesión de estudio. Sigue el, el patrón de excluir a la comunidad del proceso político. Necesitamos que nuestra comunidad esté en la mesa y no solo una pieza de, de ajedrez en vez de Este, gracias. Buenas tardes. María González. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry if there's music in the back. Um, I'll turn it off. Um, hello, my name is Maria. I am a youth and I want to participate in the voting rights study session. Please make it make it um, to May 6th at 5 p.m. As well as any other meeting regarding this. Thank you. We're gonna try um, Estrada again. You're, I'm, we're allowing you to mute, but you're, you never unmute your microphone. Okay, I'm gonna just go back to council. Thank you, Tony. Um, so I see council member Perales, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, vice mayor. So uh, I also had a conversation with some of the advocates last week and they expressed to me the, the same interest on um, wanting to see if we could change the time of this meeting. I expressed to them that uh, it was highly unlikely that we simply moved it to 5 p.m. on that Friday, um, as Fridays uh, at 5 uh, have not worked for, for us as a council for, for study sessions or meetings. But I did express to them that what uh, we have done in the past is actually uh, Tuesday evenings. Uh, we have done study sessions for our, um, our evening session on Tuesdays and that we could have that happen after 5 p.m. And I know that we may have a Tuesday coming up where um, whether we have a lighter agenda or we don't have an evening session where we can schedule it. So I wanted to ask um, city, the city manager's officer, Lee, if you could suggest uh, a potential Tuesday evening where we could reschedule this meeting. Uh, thank you, council member Perales. Uh, looking at the horizon report now, um, and I would ask Tony to jump in. I think either putting it on the May 3rd or the May, well, no, May 10th um, already has a night meeting. So I, I think your opportunity is probably May 3rd or May 17th for that night. Um, and I say that because, you know, it obviously would be easier to find time in August because um, May and June get fairly backed up. But it's my understanding it's not only the policy call for you guys, but um, in Tony's initial research into this, 
um, it's something that we need to stand up a new department and be voting, um, such as the county. So I think there's a pretty big cost um, to this and we want you guys to understand that as you go into the budget process um, so that that was not an obstacle. So I would recommend May 3rd or May 17th. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, this, this is Tony, city clerk. Ahead, Tony. Um, I had lined up a, a few people to speak at that meeting. Um, so May 17th would give me time to make sure that they can clear their their evenings on that night. Um, one of them is a professor. I don't know if he has classes on Tuesdays. I can double check. Um, but May 17th would just allow me, allow the, the people I've scheduled some extra time to make sure their calendars are clear. Okay, I, I am fine with that date um, as the, the reschedule. That way we can make that definitive here today and, and let the community know as well. Um, and then that way, um, hopefully that'll be the, the, the date that we move to. Um, and then uh, I'll just, I'm just going to mention um, what I've asked for here uh, in Spanish for our speakers that are, that are on. Uh, um, voy a tratar a cambiar a uh, la fecha de esta junta al uh, día de um, 17 de mayo, uh, es un martes, día martes, y por uh, nuestra junta en, uh, en la tarde, uh, después de, de las seis de la tarde, uh, en el día de... de uh, 20, uh, perdón, 17 de mayo, um, pero necesitamos a votar en un momento. Okay, um, that'll be my motion then is that we just, uh, I'll, I'll move that we accept the consent calendar, but we move the date of this study session to May 17th in the evening. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, don't see any other hands raised. So, Tony? Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Perales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay. So, on to the next item, which is the future of San Pedro Square and Post Street. So we will now go to public comments. LeBlanc, Nate LeBlanc. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, everybody. Thank you, uh, city council members, for uh, hearing us out today. My name is Nate LeBlanc. I'm the business development manager at the San Jose Downtown Association calling in today to say that we support the memo and that we would uh, ask that you um, forward it to the full council for um, consideration and just to kind of publicly state that SJDA will continue to work with city departments, um, various stakeholders, and of course our member businesses to try to find a solution that works for as many people as possible. Um, we, you know, we know that this is a difficult issue for some people, but that we believe in the vision that's set out in the memo and we're going to try to help uh, make it a reality if it is indeed passed and we urge you to forward it to the full council for approval. Thank you very much. Eric, sorry, I was muted. Eric Nielsen. Uh, no worries. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Nielsen. I'm actually the uh, one of the owners of 55 South on First and Post Street. Um, I'm also the chairman for the Historic District Committee for Downtown Association. Uh, I just wanted to publicly first um, thank the committee and thank the council um, for allowing um, Alfresco in the first place. Uh, the pandemic has obviously been a nightmare on um, most businesses, but especially us in the hospitality um, arena and the alfresco program and being able to close um, post trade has been um, a huge uh, life-saving <laughs> uh, line to us available um, so moving on that we i would definitely also um, like to thank the council for allowing me to speak and um, encourage um, moving this to a full committee um, and thank you very much for your time back to the committee 
Thank you. And I know there's a early consideration form on this. So Lee, do you want to speak to that? Yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, the administration did prepare um, an early consideration form and highlighted that yellow. There still is some fire and safety analysis that needs to happen, as well as um, a legal interpretation. We still don't know what the state is going to do with their emergency order and, and what legal tools and rationale um, um, that we'll have to proceed on this, although I do think that we'll have some. And then lastly, there is a funding element related to infrastructure that you know we need to better understand. So staff recommends um, that the rules committee direct us to develop a manager's budget addendum with this analysis for the council's consideration. Thank you, Lee. Uh, Councilmember Brawlis. Yeah, thank you uh, as well, uh, Lee, for the uh, report back um, on the early consideration form. And I know we had a number of more speakers lined up, um, but weren't able to, to stick around. Uh, but I wanna thank those that, that were willing to come out to speak. Uh, and those that, that wrote in as well. And, and thank you to staff specifically, uh, Blage, who's here, who's been putting in uh, the hard work since the pandemic began on the Alfresco program uh, altogether. And uh, I know likely uh, most of us here on the committee, just like community members that, that live or work uh, downtown, uh, or even those that have visited, uh, have been able to experience uh, the closure on San Pedro uh, square as well as uh, Post Street, and uh, uh, recognize that, that uh, we've heard nothing but really positive feedback from our community. Uh, and I know that I've heard that from uh, colleagues on the council as well. And for, for me, uh, this was a, a vision a number of years before the pandemic on looking at creating some more uh, open streets or closed streets, essentially, but uh, open to to the community, open to uh, the public rather than for vehicles, and uh, being able to, to create vibrant areas, especially in some of our, our commercial corridors. And uh, we actually uh, initiated a pilot process on San Pedro Street, and we're working on one on Post Street. And uh, prior to the, to the pandemic, uh, we had a number of special events that we have uh, seen closures, whether it's Sharks events uh, in the playoff runs or Super Bowl 50, where we were to pilot some work out there, Viva Calle, um, and, and ultimately the, the pilot closure along San Pedro that, that I was able to get funded back in 2019. Uh, but nothing greater than the last two years of, of the Alfresco program here uh, citywide that has given us an opportunity to be able to see how we can transform these streets that traditionally were just for the vehicle um, and open them up for the community, the greater community, for the success of our businesses, for something that we lack too much of, outdoor dining uh, in, in our city, and uh, the, the continued vibrancy of downtown, which was so vital over the past two years. And if it wasn't for this outdoor dining spaces, um, really would have, would have struggled, uh, and a number of businesses would have, would have uh, struggled to survive. And uh, what we see out in San Pedro Square, what we've seen people walking, biking, uh, patronizing our local businesses, and um, uh, that, that continues today, fortunately, but is why I'm, I'm coming to you because it's potentially looming that it may, uh, may end, uh, like we saw on Post Street. And actually following um, the reopening of Post Street to vehicles, uh, I imagine some of you may have heard as well, but we, we saw a really strong community reaction calling and demanding that we close the street back down. And, um, and that's, that's exciting, that's what we wanted, right? We, we've wanted to create these vibrant spaces uh, and I think there's no greater streets uh, that make most sense than San Pedro and Post Street. And um, as you potentially saw in the, uh, the letters uh, and then uh, certainly the two public commenters, but I know we had a number more uh, the desire is pretty overwhelming from our community that they would like to see these streets closed down permanently. And uh, what we've come to out of work with the community and the stakeholders, uh, I want to say thank you to SJDA as well, um, Project Moore over on Post Street, is uh, what we've come to is, is uh, we feel a, a way we can move forward and, and really make a definitive decision as a, a council in uh, on what we can do. And, and that's uh, got some, some looming time limit to it as well, because June 30th 
the local emergency order is set to expire. And if we don't have a permanent closure lined up on San Pedro Street, then that's gonna be reopened just like Post Street was. And rather than wait until that 11th hour to have the discussion, and quite frankly, rather than wait until the budget discussions in an MBA, uh, which would put us at that 11th hour, uh, I was hoping that we can have a discussion earlier, determine where the will of the council is. Uh, ultimately, I would agree it would require a, an MBA and a budget discussion and, and some approval there. But I think that hearing the will of the council, because there are some very difficult decisions to be made here, there's some investments that we would have to make to make this permanent. Uh, but I, I am completely uh, supportive. There are some hurdles, but I'm completely supportive of a permanent closure on both San Pedro Street and Post, uh, recognizing I think we will suggest a process for uh, Pro Street or a, a, a phasing in process for Post Street that includes what I'm suggesting now, which would be Thursday evening through Sunday. Um, but I, I would like to get that understanding from the council, which is why I still want to move forward with agendizing this for next week's council agenda, recognizing that an MBA would come uh, after that. Um, and so uh, I'm hoping to get the support of my colleagues here uh, to, to do just that. So I will move um, my memorandum. Thank you. Second. Councilmember Perales, uh, we've got a motion and a second. Councilmember Perales, so if I understand you correctly, you want to have a dialogue and hopefully get council support to give staff direction to create a, an MBA. Is that an accurate that is, summary? That is correct. Okay, great. Councilmember Davis. Thank you. And I want to thank Councilmember Perales for bringing this forward. I think it is really important for us to take action sooner rather than later. Um, first of all, it will avoid unnecessary staff work if there isn't uh, support for this, although I will say I do support it. I think uh, it, it just makes sense for San Pedro to be a pedestrian mall or whatever it's called. I think that's what it's called. Um, and, and I want to hear more about Post Street. I, I know less about that area, and I, I think that it was um, maybe not as universally accepted or unanimously accepted. So I want to hear about that, and I want to hear from the business owner. I think um, I think it's important for us to have this discussion, as I said, sooner rather than later, because I don't want to open San Pedro and then close it again. I think we need to figure out a way to keep it to keep it closed because there are all the businesses that are out there have furniture out there have tables out there all of that kind of stuff needing having to figure out where that stuff is going to go and and store it or or dispose of it temporarily just doesn't make it just doesn't make sense we're trying to bring back our downtown i there are areas of our downtown that have just been devastated by COVID and we want the areas that are vibrant to remain vibrant. So I think this is a really important step in that direction. And I look forward to having this discussion as a full council next week. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Um, Tony? I wanted to just add one more thing. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry you. council member Brown's. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councilmember Davis, and and I appreciate your support. I know uh, you were very proud of being able to champion um, our um, uh, closed streets throughout the city and um, Abierto program that that has been very successful. And I would say, um, if we can end that program with a permanent closure of San Pedro, uh, it's a tremendous success. And if we can't, I think it's a tremendous failure. Honestly, I think that we we lose the um, you know the opportunity to really have something beneficial out of the Abierto program. And if we can't do it on San Pedro Street, uh, if I'm a community member, I would assume that the city can't do it anywhere. Um, and so I I, I appreciate uh, your support there. And I would I just to echo one thing, but I think we can we can save most of the conversation for next week. But uh, I, a number of the businesses there are very much concerned exactly what you talked about. They're wondering, you know, do they do they invest in, you know, making uh, or purchasing better furniture for outside or there's some that actually haven't taken advantage of it yet because they've assumed that we were just going to reopen the street. So there's some that are waiting for this decision to determine is the council really going to close down this street permanently or not. And um, and I think we, that's where I think that we need to, to send a strong message and be able to give that uh, assurance. And, uh, and again, I think if we can't do it on San Pedro Street, then, um, then, then where can we actually do it? So, uh, so appreciate your support on that. I look forward to the conversation next week. 
All right, Council Member Davis, do you have a rebuttal to Council Member Perales's compliment? No, I just wanted to state, I, I think having El Fresco be permanent is really important. It's been um, something that the businesses on Lincoln Avenue have have really, you know, s said is important to them to to remain even even post COVID and even as people are are able to be dining back inside, having that outside option is well utilized in, in many areas. I know not just on Lincoln Avenue. And so I, I absolutely agree. It is important for Al Fresco to be permanent and, and the permanent closure on San Pedro just makes the most sense. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, no, sorry, I think I called it Abierto. Al Fresco, thank you. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Council Member Cohen. I just want to, I support this, but I just wanted to, um, ask whether we want to go back. The one public commenter who spoke earlier and was concerned about her schedule is now has her hand up. And I thought maybe we want to just, since she waited all this time, we might want to give her the opportunity to speak. Sure, but well, that would be under Blair Carson. Yes, Blair Carson. Yes, so let's give her, her an opportunity to speak. Thank you, I, I actually really appreciate that. Um, because we were under the understanding that this was going to be about the post street and San Pedro Square closure. Um, I do want to thank everybody that spoke on behalf of the meeting. Um, and I agree that we need translators and there are a lot of um, people that are underrepresented in this community. Um, I feel like these could have definitely been two separate meetings. Um, that being said, um, I am the owner of Page Boy, which is a salon on post street. Um, my salon was closed for nine months. Um, we barely got by by the skin of our teeth besides the grit. Um, I'm a San Jose native. I love my city. I believe in my community and I believe in the future of our community. So right now, a lot of us on the street are banking on the future of San Jose and where it's going. But like, we're literally out here in the Thunderdome. Like we're dealing with like San Pedro Square is, beautiful and they have all the money and all the finances and we're over here like with the scraps and that's I'm not calling out anybody but like I think our street has the potential to be just as beautiful just as cool and I think it's just as important and I think that anybody that owns a business on the street feels passionate about this community in the city and that's why we're still out here doing this after the pandemic so I would not benefit necessarily from a closure because I am not a restaurant or a bar, but I see what it does do for my community. I saw families walking through, people with their dogs. I, I saw people that I don't normally see on the street. Um, and so I think it was great when it was closed. And another thing is more cars drive the wrong way than the right way. And I've actually thought about setting up my GoPro just to show you guys like how many cars drive the wrong way down this street which also becomes a safety issue. All right. Council Member Cohen, did you have anything else? No, that's it. Okay, so Tony. Cohen. Aye. Cross Davis. Yes. Perales. Yes. Jones. Aye. Thank you. All right, the next item is the charter amendment recommendation from council member Carrasco. I Is there anyone from council member Carrasco's team? Vice mayor. Yes. I this is this is uh council member carrasco for some reason i raised my hand and i'm you <laughs> yes i saw where i, like, I had I my love, hand raised it's like and i, I love happen. it i've always wanted to be you <laughs> okay well you had to take it so literally <laughs> go ahead council member well uh good afternoon council colleagues and good afternoon uh vice mayor thank you for having me here uh i guess now they changed my name all right well, it was nice being you for all of 10 seconds. <clears throat> uh, uh, I wanted to uh, uh, talk to you a little bit about why I'm introducing this memo. In uh, 1966, the Planning Commission was written into the charter. And since 1966, that's a whole 
uh, what is it, 56 years since uh, any uh, sort of uh, 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 policies uh, have been uh, changed that w that uh, that changes the charters in terms of how we how we uh, govern that commission. In other words, that's the o that's one of the only commissions that is not aligned with the rest of the commissions. We cannot remove a single commissioner for any reason because it's uh, governed by the charter unless we decide to align it with the rest of the commissions. In other words, we can go ahead and remove a commissioner from the art commission, from the library commission, from uh, the early childhood development commission, from uh, even the civil uh, service commission, but we cannot remove a commissioner from what I consider to be one of the most powerful commissions, the planning commission, uh, for any reason whatsoever. Um, because it is governed by the uh, charter. And uh, Nora is here. If you have any further questions, she can explain it uh, much more eloquently and articulate, and articulate that than I can. But uh, this came as a huge surprise to me um, for a number of reasons. Now, uh, for those of you who are concerned that this might impact any of the commissioners that are currently on the commission, it does not because this would have to go actually to the voters in November if we decided to go ahead and uh, align this uh, commission with the rest of the commissioners. It'd have to go in November. Uh, the voters would have to vote that in. And so we couldn't, we couldn't make any changes anyway now. We couldn't impact the current commissioners anyway now. Uh, so uh, those of you who are uh, supporting any of the commissioners and are concerned that it might impact their duties and responsibilities, no worries, no concerns there. Uh, the commissioners are safe. This is simply to uh, align, again, this commission with the rest of the commissioners and give this council or any council moving forward the authority, uh, which I believe we should have, to remove commissioners based on um, uh, whatever reason we think is appropriate. Now, we don't have, again, even if we did have the authority to remove them, we don't have the authority to just uh, pick up a, a phone and uh, remove them. We still would have to vote on it and they still have the right to a hearing if if that's correct. Nora, Nora, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we would still have to vote to get them uh, uh, released from their from their duties. So that's the memo before you. I hope that you will uh, consider moving this forward so that we can continue to have this discussion uh, at the council. Thank you. We'll now go to uh, public comments. Tony? Call in user three. Yeah, I hope you guys can keep with these uh, patios and uh, closed street because you know, that downtown is better than a doornail. We've already oh, talked about that topic. Better. We're talking about we're talking about the planning commission appointment charter. Oh, oh, some of you guys are still talking about that. Now, whatever. I'll just go to you know. I'll I'll be talking about different things during open comment. Thanks. Okay. Caller 4963. Yeah, hi, Martha O'Connell. I know my comments aren't going to go anywhere. I know you're all going to vote to proceed, which is tying right in with what I'm going to say as to why I'm gravely concerned about this, which is the issue of speech and dissent and being a, a, in my, holding a minority opinion on a commission. I would thank Commissioner Carrasco, and I'm not being sarcastic. I sincerely mean this. I, I had no idea that commissioners could be removed with or without cause. And I think this is really scary, and I think the charter should be changed to not allow this. I know there was a great outcry on the Planning Commission when a certain commissioner was appointed. I followed all that in the newspapers. But I really think that this kind of broad sweep 
of what you can do to a commissioner without cause is of grave constitutional concern and is really not in the best interest of our community. Thank you. Mr. Beekman. Hi, Blair Beekman here. Thank you very much from that, for that clarification by Martha O'Connell. Boy, um, I read this uh, item and, and the ideas of with or without cause. It's, it's a very questionable language. I mean, I, I respect what uh, Councilperson Carrasco wants to do for the future of this idea and have, uh, you know, the planning commission as a part of the, of the rest of the commission process and, and, and to play by the same rules. Totally understandable and very good. I think what Martha is trying to ask and what I'm just learning for the first time is that the language states with or without cause uh council can uh i don't know remove a a, a a commission person that language just seems a bit odd <laughs> and i don't you know i'm 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 no i'm not a pro about these things but uh a bit more reserve and a set of checks and balances seems more appropriate to and in how to describe that item can nora and city attorney staff want to be willing to work on it just to clean up this language and and and, and the more respectable language that uh says that you know at, i don't know at council's discretion uh at the at as, as counselors see fit as council persons see fit you know some sort of language that with or without cause really is a bit uh broad and 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 uh a bit whimsical and I hope we can work on this issue. And uh, I hear what Martha's saying. I hear what Councilperson Carrasco is saying. Good luck in voting for it and possibly working on the language too. Thank you. Back to the committee. Thank you. Um, before I go to Council Member Brawls, I just have a couple of quick questions, um, either for you, Lee, or Nora. Uh, so we can't remove a planning commissioner under any circumstances or what? Uh, I'll Explain take that one. Explain how, how it works. Yeah, that's okay. All uh, I'll take that one. Um, okay. This, in, in the charter, um, there are provisions um, for appointment of planning commissioners and also removal of planning commissioners. And those same provisions don't um, appear for other charter commission positions, but for the planning commission, it, the charter states that the council may remove a member from office, meaning from the planning commission, at any time for misconduct, inefficiency, or willful neglect in the performance of the duties of his or her office. So the removal has to be connected to the performance of duties um, for misconduct, inefficiency, or uh, willful neglect, um, but in the duties as a planning commissioner. So it, that's a, a very limited reason for removal and it's in the charter. And then my uh, second question is, do, does anybody know the history of why we um, singled out the planning commission to have that specific requirement or those specific requirements for removal? Um, is there any um, hi historical record of, of why? I, I have my thoughts and opinion, but I didn't, I don't know if it's, well, it's not based on any actual documentation or, or facts that I have. Council member, we would have to research that and we could do that if this ends up going to council. Um, but this uh, uh, has been in the charter. Uh, it was for a long time. It was first amended in this, the uh, planning commission provisions. I don't know about this particular section. It was first amended um, at election in 1966. And then the uh, um, planning commission uh, sections were again amended in 1970, 1988, and 1994. So we would have to research when that provision first 
ended up in the charter. It may have been there originally. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to, okay. to try to dig through microfiche or <laughs> old dusty boxes to try to find it because I'm making the assumption that the reason why it's in there like that is because uh, an earlier council wanted to create some type of barrier or insulation uh, from council and the planning commission to avoid uh, politics or your personalities. So that's just my assumption, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go to council member Perales. Thank you. Um, I, I, so I had a similar question, but I had a follow-up question, which is, Nora, can you describe what the process for removal is from the other commissions? I'm looking up the exact language in the Muni Code right now, but it's in the Municipal Code, and there's a process, and uh, the removal is not limited solely to performance in, um, in office. Would you mind getting that link? I'm, I'm just really curious on the specific yeah. language there. Would you mind gathering that language? And I'm happy to pause and um, allow uh, Councilmember Davis to ask her questions, but I don't know if she's going to make you uh, go run and do something too. So, <laughs> so um, but I'm happy to pause uh, for a moment here uh, if you want to come back to me, Vice Mayor. Okay. Councilmember Davis. Well, I'm. Um I, I appreciate the question so far. My understanding is that the Planning Commission is a quasi judicial body. They make, uh, they hear appeals from directors, planning directors' hearings. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, uh, yes, although um, arguably the Civil Service Commission is also, okay. and uh, it doesn't have that same limitation. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I guess I think the the reasons for removal right now, misconduct, inefficiency, and willful neglect in their duties are sufficient. And frankly, reasons the only reasons why we should be removing um, planning commission members and probably civil service commission members, honestly, as quasi judicial bodies. I also want to point out, I, you know, plenty of planning commissioners, and I'm not commenting on any current planning commissioners and their uh, their candidacies for office, but plenty of people on council have historically served on planning commission. And I don't like the idea of saying that a majority of council members who maybe didn't like a candidate for council could remove them from their appointed position just because they didn't like that. And that I understand that couldn't happen this time, but it could happen in the future. And that that's a way of of really kind of squashing, putting our putting our thumb on the scale of um, a future elections, possibly. And I don't like that idea. I'm really uh, that makes me really, uh, frankly, ill. So I'm not I'm not in favor of this. And I'm, I'm really not looking forward to um, to having this move forward. Thank you. All right, Nora, did you uh, find uh, I, your I did, up? thank you. And I apologize for not having this in front of me. I had looked it up before, um, but I, I don't have the, I didn't have the sections right in front of me, um, but I got a lifeline from someone in my office. Um, the, uh, the salary setting commission has a, has a similar um, section, civil service does not. The Muni code provides, um, that uh, notwithstanding an appointment for a specific term or part of a term, any person appointed to and holding the position of member of any board or commission may be removed from appointment at any time by the council with or without prior notice and with or without cause. Um, and uh, that's the uh, more general provision in the Muni code that applies to most of your commissions. Do you mind if I pick back up, Vice Mayor? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Nora. That that does help. I will say uh, it doesn't help my decision though, because I actually don't agree with that language. Um, my my concern is is the without cause portion. I I, I definitely don't agree that 
with, with whatever commission that um, there could be a without cause provision. And I would prefer to sort of go the other direction where we actually look at ensuring uh, that there is cause regardless of, of what commission. I, I'm not totally closed off to the idea of is there something that's a better hybrid uh, because I recognize that the planning commission language is very specific to the, just that role and it doesn't give any other leeway. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna go all the way to where the language is now because I, I don't even agree with that with our commissioners today. I think I, I would imagine most our commissioners aren't aware of that if I, you know, if I wasn't aware of that. Um, and I would imagine they'd be pretty surprised to find out that you know, on any given day, a council member that let's say, yes, they don't like them um, and that they could put forward a memo that would say, hey, you're gonna be off the commission if we can get a majority of votes. Uh, I wouldn't expect that to happen you know, uh, often, even if at all, I have more, uh, I think, respect for, for the people that are on the council with me, my colleagues. But I do think that that's, it creates that, that opening for that possibility. And I, I know I would be nervous as a commissioner that um, that, that would be the parameter. And to change the Muni code, we don't have to go to the charter, correct, Nora? Correct. So um, is there a reason why the planning commission rules were within the charter? I, I, get, I don't know, I guess it goes back to Council, or Vice Mayor Jones' question, which is there's gotta be some historical context there why that landed in the, the, the charter, right? Yes, and, okay. and um, it, as I say, it, that section on the planning commission goes back uh, to before 1966, because it was first amended in 1966. So we would have to research and see when that particular provision came into the charter or if it was there originally, and then um, what the purpose may be. Um, so, and, and we can do that research, it's not impossible. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess, so I'm not comfortable with the memo with the direction that as is. And again, I would actually prefer that we, if we're going to make a change that we look at the charter and we actually amend that language and, and, and don't have it be so easy for the rest of the commission. Um, and I wouldn't be against looking at, well, how do we actually um, line up a little better the planning commission? Um, but I would need to know that historical context and I would want to understand the ramifications of that first before we did that. So um, that's my concerns. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Carrasco. Thank you, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, and and uh, I, I actually agree with you, uh, Councilmember Perales. Uh, we use that language because that was the language that was uh, uh, currently being used, and we got direction from uh, from our um, from our lawyer's office. Uh, but um, and I'm willing to uh, rework uh, that memo if uh, if it so pleases the. Uh, the committee. Uh, I don't agree uh, necessarily with Council Member uh, Davis's assertion that there's going to be a, a two-thirds majority that's going to vote out a, uh, a commissioner in whichever commission, by the way. It's not just the Planning Commission. Uh, there's been uh, different um, uh, members throughout the city who have uh, who have thrown their hat in, and they've uh, they've either sat on a commission, have resigned from a commission, have been former commissioners, have dabbled in it, uh, one way or the other. Uh, the planning commission just seems to have a little bit uh, uh, more ambitious individuals, if you will, uh, and that doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to give you a shoe in uh, into this. Uh, uh, into this uh, seat. In fact, I unseated an individual that had been on the planning commission, uh, made it to uh, one term, and then I unseated him. So it, it's not a it's not a guaranteed uh, victory uh, nor staying power. Uh, but um, but but I get it. Uh, I, I I do think, however, uh, that there should be an ability for the council to be able to have some authority over our commissioners whom we appoint to carry out their duties and, uh, and that we should be able to hold them accountable just like the voters hold us accountable uh, and they have an ability to recall us if they don't believe that we're doing our job correctly or if they are uh, uh, disgruntled with us in any uh, which way for whatever reason. 
Uh, what troubles me about, about this one particular commission is that it says, uh, and I, I, I don't I don't know the exact wording, but you said, uh, Nora, that it says uh, something about it's it's tied directly to the job and responsibility or the way that they're carrying out their job uh, as it relates directly to the responsibilities of the commission, which is fine. But if if there was a, a commissioner that was committing fraud or embezzling money or committed even real estate fraud, which is not necessarily tied to their jobs and responsibilities to the commission. Uh, they're not, that's not necessarily the criteria to remove someone from their responsibilities on the commission. And, and I would think that that would be enough reason to pause and raise an eyebrow as to whether or not to keep this person on a commission representing the city of San Jose. At the very least, have a conversation, a public conversation, and have a discussion as to whether or not we keep the person there. And right now, there is no mechanism or there is no venue for us to have that conversation because uh, it would be it would be a mute point. And so I'm more than happy to uh, take it back, or I don't know if uh, if uh, if the committee would be consider would consider moving it forward, and then we uh, we toy with that first uh, line at the uh, at the full council. Nora, I, I'll take uh, your direction if you'll if you'll offer it. Okay, um, well, a couple things. Um, there are different uh, versions. For example, the um, uh, Federated Board and the Police and Fire Board um, have removal provisions that are set out in the charter, or I'm sorry, in the Muni Code, and um, are different than the uh, broad um overall term and then also uh, i just wanted to point out that the uh, civil service commission can remove uh, one of its own members um, again the same language for misconduct inefficiency or willful neglect in the performance of the duties of his or her office um, but that person would have to be given um, the notice in writing and and then would have an opportunity to be heard before um, the Civil Service Commission. Um, and uh, that's that's a little bit different than the Planning Commission. That would be the Civil Service Commission itself rather than the council. So there are variations on a theme on this. Um, if you uh, wanted, you're asking how you get this to council, is that correct? Council member? Um, well, it depends on how the vote goes today. If the, um, that it can be sent on and otherwise you can try to get into priority setting. Would you agree, Lee, on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a few paths here. Um, you know, I, I would say if the council wished to pursue this, um, you know, I'll just say we're going to try and come forward on June 7th, um, I believe, with two charter um Amend, or two, two ballot measures amending the city charter based off of the special meeting last week, one dealing with the, the inclusion of equity in some of the decision making, um, and the other mostly around modernization. So this could fit within that work. Um, but I think, you know, this would need to go to council and we need to have that direction relatively soon, like next week. Um, or the rules committee could definitely include this. Um, as a part of the other deferrals that the council made into that next bucket that we would bring forward as part of the roadmap um, to do additional work around. Um, that would require you guys to prioritize it, um, but it would, if prioritized, give us the flexibility to ask some of these policy questions and do some engagement around it if you thought you needed that. Thank you, Lee, for for that. Um, so 
there's I've I've heard you know differing opinions on on this this topic, and I actually um, kind of lean towards um, uh, some of the other commissions uh, having similar um, requirements as the Planning Commission. I was looking at the Board of Fair Campaign and, and uh, Political Practices, and it actually surprised me that that didn't have a higher bar in terms of removing uh, individuals from, from that, uh, that board, because that's a board where it's very easy to have that board making recommendations to investigate council members or other individuals, you know, candidates, and which, you know, obviously can create some, some tension that might potentially lead to uh, an effort to have people removed from that, that board. So uh, I'm leaning more in the direction of beefing up some of the requirements on some of the other boards, like, like the Civil Service Commission. And so um, kind of going in a different, different direction, Council Member Carrasco. So I think uh, Lee, um, the recommendation of moving it to um, the next bucket and having staff have an opportunity to, to really do some, some work on it if, if council feels it's a priority, I think it's probably um, what well, is, I think, the best way to go to move forward. So council member uh, Perales. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll make that motion. I would agree with that as well. I, I think there's actually a lot here that is worth looking at, similar to what you said, as I was saying earlier, it looks like the Muni code probably needs to be amended maybe for all the different commissions um and it sounds like we probably haven't done this collective work we've, we've had each commission has had a separate um you know uh, parameter around it and uh, i don't think that that, that you know it, the the conversation we had had before for the charter amendments was i think it was immediate and next or something and, and 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 are not happening at all and so i would agree as what lee was saying this this in my mind as well would fit into the bucket of next uh because i do think it requires some additional work and so, um, Lee, when can you repeat when that would come back? You you said with with that other work that we were we all prioritize this as next. Yeah, that that would come forward on May sixteenth as a part of one of the budget study sessions when we bring forward the proposed roadmap, and we're going to have other items that have been yellow lit, um, you know, at this committee from from the past few months, as well as the. Uh, um, in Council Member Cohen's memo and the motion, I forget what items, but you guys referred some of the commission's recommendation to that process as well. So I think we would include this in that um, for your own consideration when you prioritize. Okay, thank you. And, and then if you can take into the consideration when we have that discussion, the conversations that we've had today in regards to, um, you know, obviously the, the, the looks like some muni code amendments yeah. and, and the realigning of maybe all of the, the commissions and, and having a better um, parameter that maybe we all agree on um, for, for removal of commissioners. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely take this conversation and, and package something kind of holistically there. That's, that's my motion, thanks. Um, Vice Mayor, may I uh, just make a point here on, yes, on the may. direction? Um, I just want to remind everybody that if um, if we're just dealing with the municipal code, that's one thing, and trying to uh, sort it out. If it's a uh, charter commission that has language in the charter, um, that would have to go to the voters. And so if council wanted to deal with that this year, um, that would have to be done by early August. Yeah, uh, and I, I was aware of that. I, I know that that was the same uh, I guess the same opportunity we had with everything we had debated on before, either immediate or later, and we knew that some of these things would have to go to a, a future ballot. Uh, they mm -hmm. weren't going to make it potentially this yep. November, right? So yeah, so I, I, I understand that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, don't see any other hands raised. Uh, it was a motion. Did we have a second on that? Second. No. <laughs> I, uh, I did not hear a second. Because there was not a second. So if we don't get a second, uh, Nora, it just, what, what happens? It just. <laughs> um, the matter doesn't, doesn't move forward to a vote. 
so it's kind of in limbo, I guess. Um, so Council Member Carrasco, uh, maybe uh, you might want to go back to the lab and <laughs> and second it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, I was chapping jokes for ten seconds. <laughs> come up with a, a a different proposal. Maybe that might uh, work. Anyway, so we didn't get a second. Uh, so well, I I uh, uh, my understanding was. Uh, uh, Councilmember Perales was moving an entirely different motion. So, yeah, that was that was my understanding as well. I, yeah, I was, but nobody nobody likes what you wrote, Magdalena. Nobody likes what I said. So, well, that, that how might be a little. How unfortunate. That, that's, a little, that's a little strong, Raul. I mean, uh, Councilmember. I mean, I'm just being blunt here. Sorry. How unfortunate. No one wants any uh, accountability. Okay, then. Okay. Um, all right. So the motion does not get a second. Uh, so it dies. So we're going to move to open forum. So Tony. Blair Beekman. Hi, Blair Beekman. Uh, we have procedures and rules in this life, but I think Council Person Carrasco and Perala has really tried to make something simple and clear and how we can have a, a, a future uh, of the commission process itself, uh, its rules to be clear and understandable, more clear. Good luck to really work on this. Uh, good luck how we can talk about procedures that have been in place since the late 60s. Uh, I wanted to um, ask about, uh, there is going to be a May Day celebrations. So there's gonna be a Via Calle on May Day itself, which is kind of interesting and unique. Uh, planning by city of San Jose. Did they plan this with May Day organizers who have a really important May Day uh, walk and march and, and festival each day as each May Day as well? Um, I hope I hope you did. And I hope that this can be talked about more and everyone to be clear about the future of a uh, uh, and we can all have a good May Day. <laughs> Uh, things may have been a bit uncomfortable. I hope something's working out and, and, and it's important we do all work that out and can work that out. Good luck in our efforts to do that. And I wanted to also offer really quickly that with the uh, alfresco uh, plans that people seem to really like and are supporting, I hope there can be that same sort of support for the future of uh, Zoom meeting connections uh so council meetings can have a zoom connection it's a bit questionable right now and and all of these things are in this era of covid good luck how we can address these things and and possibly uh what are the ways to continue such things uh thanks a lot for the meeting there were some good words said uh on the last item i i hope we can really work on these issues thank you call on user three Red light cameras, buildings burning to the ground, gun control measures, nobody getting arrested at these sideshows, even though you know they're coming up, crime running rampant in the streets, road diets that are unnecessary, taking forever to be completed. This is your city, amongst a bunch of other things. But uh, yeah, gun control. You know, I tried to talk about it yesterday. You guys shut me down hard. Didn't like it, man. You didn't like hearing about it. It, it uh, I know I'm glad I'm making the right people angry. That's all I have to say. I hope that you guys see every time I call. I, I'm sure you are. Maybe you're not. Who knows? I just know that these gun control measures that Sam wants are going to be illegal. Oh, no, I mentioned his name. The mayor wants and the city council wants is awful. I don't know how you're going to enforce these things. And, you know, some city council people think it's no big deal that it's going to be $25 a firearm, even though they won't have to pay it because they work for that wonderful San Jose Police Department, which is the worst police department in the entire nation. I mean, when you have to put people uh, on YouTube or, or Twitter, playing soccer with kids while you're fully uniformed. I mean, you must be, 
you guys are reaching for something or the the police been trying to get the, the animals out of the uh out of the out of the pet store the other day or the uh, and over there when the when the fire that you could see from space was burning out of control i mean how many fire engines you have, you have enough fire engines how long does it take to put out a fire that never used to happen burn to the ground oh wait a minute you eric Pin erica pinto hello uh Rolls Committee, I was originally supposed to be here a little bit earlier. I think the timing didn't quite work, but I am um, here to comment on um, Council Member Perales's memos directing city staff to fully convert the existing um, Al Fresco closure of San Pedro Street to a permanent closure. Um, I am here on behalf of SPUR and we wholeheartedly support this memo. Um, we also support, you know, the ensuing design guidelines that will provide direction and maintaining a consistent aesthetic and operations framework for local business owners. We strongly believe that vibrant and permanent slow streets and outdoor dining initiatives are critical to the continued vitality of small businesses and the neighborhoods they serve, as well as helping to make San Jose more livable, equitable, and sustainable. We're happy that this, uh, this memo uh, will be put in front of the city council to further discuss um, these options. Um, now is the time to move forward and we are very supportive of taking these next steps to have a San Jose that continues to be more livable, vibrant and equitable for all. Thank you very much. Back to the committee. Thank you, Tony. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Take care, everyone. <laughs>